Hello, everyone, and welcome to Discipline Daily, where we put discipline first. I'm your host, Nicholas Fryer. What's up? I'm Cal St. Kyle. How you doing, Kyle? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. How's your vacation been? It's been awesome, dude. Drove up to the Bay Area for Christmas, and it's nice to get a Christmas off for once, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, man, you picked the best weeks to be off. <laughs> yeah, right. The last two weeks have been... Just the heaviest weeks that we've had. How, how's your workouts been? Uh, I've managed to stay on them. I mean, they've been pretty good. I think I missed last leg day only because my legs were still pretty sore. So that was the only day I took off. I was like, my legs are sore, so I'm going to just let them heal. But other than that, um, I've been on top of them. Dude, whenever I go on vacation, man, I, I blow up. <laughs> I blow up, man. So, but I mean, the cool thing is as soon as I get back to work, it, it comes off like that. Yeah. You know? um, it, I just totally, I, I got undisciplined and I do that on vacation. It's bad. It's bad. Well, discipline is a, it's a muscle, man. And if you don't work it, then it atrophies. The cool thing is I got back on it, man. The big, big thing for me, was just setting my alarm back at 530. I, I was doing about six and I you can't have that, man. <laughs> If you have it, it's weird because when you're when you're off, you're like, okay, I can start to sleep in a little bit. I can yeah. kind of take more time to just like you know sleep in and not do what I need to do. And then that's that's like a domino effect. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, now I didn't do my workout. I didn't eat what I was supposed to eat. I yeah, <laughs> dude, dominoes from there. It really does domino from there. You, I think getting up at at a set time, especially specifically if it's an early time. It sets the whole day. It sets the whole day up. If you barter with yourself, that weak barter where you're like, hey, I'm going to sleep ten, sleep until 6. I'm going to sleep until 6.30. And then you snooze the alarm after that. <laughs> Dude, it, what do you think the rest of the day is going to be like? Yeah, it's that little demon inside of your head telling you, oh, it's okay. You can just stay in bed. Like, you got nothing else to do. You can wake up later. You can work out later. You, you know, you don't really have to be anywhere. It's just sleep in a little bit. And you're like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything. And you listen to that little demon voice inside your head that's like the best salesman to you. Yeah, he can sell you on anything. And you listen to it. And then you're like, damn it, dude. Why did I do that? Yeah. And then, you know, and it, and I, find, I found myself staying up a little later too mm -hmm. and then i'm i'm eating a little later normally my cutoff time for eating is eight o'clock yeah it hasn't been happening but the cool thing is i'm aware of it you know and then so as soon as i was aware that i was doing that on my little vacation that i was having because i i got about half my vacation left right now um i fixed it i put the alarm back at 5 30 um, I'm working on the, the bed one. I'm giving myself a little leniency with that right now, but just, I, I put nine 30, but I was going to bed like freaking 11. It's kind of easy to do when you don't have your main like discipline, like work is probably your main discipline because you have to go. There's no, there's no question on, can, can I like not go? Can I just work later? It's like, no, I have to be there at a certain time. So it's, something that you have to do it you have to be disciplined on work and so that's the easiest thing to be disciplined on and then you can discipline yourself around the rest of the the day like okay i need to wake up at 5 30 because i need to work out and then i have to eat at a certain time because i have to be at work at a certain time and you can plan your whole day but when work is gone then it's like okay like now there's this big gap where i don't have to be disciplined i can you know i can push my workout into the middle of the day i can push my eating a little bit later because i don't have to be up at 5 30 and then that just throws off your whole your whole discipline that you have oh no, man that's what that, the, the cool thing i just remind myself that you know i'm I, i'll be back at work so i fix it all when i get back to work but i mean i i don't want to wait for till i get back for work you know i i, I could tell that I was going down a bad path. So I'm like, nope, fix it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I feel like sometimes it is good to give yourself a little bit of a break from things and, you know, yeah. like a little bit of a vacation. I mean, not too long, like if it's a week or if it's two weeks, you know, you, sometimes you need that time to just, just relax yeah. and just reset yourself, you know? Dude, I, I was so tired today. That was, that was the one thing I, I did tell myself was I'm going to work out a little different than normally. Um, Cause normally I do, basically all calisthenics 
So I've been trying to just do weights and more heavier, you know, volume and reps. Um, I was keeping until about six. Um, so I've been doing that, but I've been running, dude. And running has become one of my new favorite passions, man. Really? Yeah. This is what I didn't want to tell you. And I've been saying it's freaking awesome, dude. I have another little, like, just kind of, like, dude, so I have a really good, like, mental toughness test. And it's literally, because when I get ready for a run, I just, I, I'm not ready for a run. I don't get ready for a run. Like, it was raining a little bit today, you know? Um, and I said, I, I'm running every other day. So no matter what, like, clockwork, I run. Like, I ran today. I'm going to do weights tomorrow. And then it's, you know, weights one day, every other day, right? Um, so today was our running day and it was like, dude, it's cold. It's a little rainy too. And I run outside and I don't like, you have seen my neighborhood a little bit, but there's so many Hills, man. So many, it's all Hills. Dude, I ran 6.2 miles. Wow. Like I never run. How long did it take you? Like 45 minutes? No. no. <laughs> 57, <laughs> like 57. So the pace was nine minutes, 33 seconds. It's not a bad pace for um, the elevation gain that I did was 547 feet, dude. So I think that what that means is if I'm running for 6.2 miles, it's basically like you're going up 547 feet of elevation within six miles. Wow. It's pretty gnarly, man, right? Yeah. Um, dude, like, so the key is I used to run with uh, music, right? I don't do that anymore, man. I literally, I just, I don't bring any technology. I only have my Garmin so I could track where I'm going, right? Um, and dude, you literally, you just have a battle with your mind the whole time. That's all it is. It's so sick, man. It makes you so self-aware. It's ridiculous. Because think about it, like, it's a really good mental toughness test. Like, especially, if, I think, especially if you don't run. Like, I'm not a runner. I don't run. Um but it's a good test to see how far you can go. And I think the only reason I stopped running was because I had to come back to Stevie. Um, like I can't be out up there all day. I was out there for an hour, you know, but I, I think I would have just kept going, man. My cardio is unbelievable. Like I, I can, I can hold a conversation the whole way. It's not my cardio. So I'm like, okay, it's not my cardio. And then my feet, right. My feet start to hurt. I'm like, okay, my feet are hurting, but I'm just going to ignore it. Right. Um, I'm like, okay, now my ankles are hurting. Okay. My ankles hurting. Okay. Ignore that one too. And then like, I started having like a pain. I think it was my kidney maybe. Um, so my sometimes little... you get that little pain in your side where it's like, yeah. like a weird little pain down here. Yeah. And like yeah. my back was hurting a little. Right. And I'm like, okay, that hurts. I, and I think about it like, and I'm in my head thinking about it. I'm like, where's hurting. Right. I'm like, okay, my, my back hurts. I'm like, okay. Is this going to stop me? No, dude. Like, and then, and then as I'm running too, I always look at which way I'm going to go. Right. And then I'll look, Oh, this way, that's the hill way. And then that way is going to add a bunch of distance. Go that when I go that way, or like, I see a hard route in the street, right? Like, Oh, I could run on the street. Right. Or I could choose the grass way that has all these freaking gopher holes. Yeah. I'm going to run on that. You know, and it's just like, like choosing the hard pass and then just listening to your mind and you're running down and then, Hey, go around that pole. Make sure you run all the way down. You better go around that pole. If you don't go around that pole, your, your mind is winning, you know? Yeah. So you got to be in control. And it's just constantly, you're playing that game the whole time, dude. It's so fun. It's kind of like all my squat days where I'm like, man, I do not want to squat. Today. I'm so tired. God, I really don't want to do it. It's like, oh. okay. I'm just going to do it. And you tell yourself, no, like you're doing it. It doesn't matter how you feel. You're going to do it. And then you'll do like one set and you'll do another set and you'll be like, okay, you know, maybe I'll just do three sets today because, you know, I'm tired and I need to rest. And it's like, no, dude, like, no, you're doing the amount of sets that you said you were going to do. Yeah. You're doing the amount of reps you said you were going to do. You're not. <laughs> do one more, dude. Out of it, you know, like, oh, it's okay. Like I can take, I can only do four today. It's fine. And it's like, no, you got to push yourself. You got to, you got to. Tell that little brain, little voice inside your brain, no, I'm doing this. And you're not right. telling me what to do. I'm telling you what to do. 
Yeah, especially I love when, oh, do four sets, this, you know, 10 reps, whatever. I'd be like, dude, I'm doing fucking 12 because I said so, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just to show you his boss. Yeah. And that's like the mindset that, that you kind of have to have with everything. There's going to be so many things that you don't want to do that you're like, I don't want to do this right now, but you have to just make yourself do it. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you're thinking about. It's like, this is what I have to do. So I need to do it. And so putting yourself through these things like running or like doing squats or like doing whatever and fighting back against your voice, that's how you become stronger. That's how when it comes time to do like a bigger thing that you don't want to do, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, man, it's excuses. And I feel like, I swear, a majority of people that I talk to, they, they always give excuses. They always look for excuses. And I'm like, dude, you just gotta, you gotta think of what you can do and not what you can't do. You know, people, they'll use anything as an excuse. They're, they're, their arm hurts, whatever. They're like, oh, I can't work out because my arm hurts. You got two legs, don't you? Yeah. You can do you can run. You can do squats, you can do lunges. Yeah. So you, you got to look at what you can do. And, and they just look for the excuse. They find the excuse. And then they just hold on to that ex- excuse and just that's it. And you can't, man. You can always find an excuse for yeah. anything. Yeah. And that's, it's just resistance. Yeah. And it's one of those things too. It's like when you have to go to work, you know, it's like, you don't want to go to work. Nobody really actually is like, Oh yeah, I, I want to get up and I want to go to work, but you have to go to work or else you're going to get fired. So it's easy to be disciplined when it comes to like going to work or something like that. But when it comes time to working out, eating right, or turning off the TV at a certain time or turning off your phone at a certain time or getting the sleep that you need to get, you always say like, it's okay. I can just I can just watch the TV or it's okay. I can eat this or it's okay. I can skip this workout because there, you're not going to get in trouble for it, but you have to be able to discipline yourself and tell yourself, no, I have to do it. Like, yeah. What, what, what's that quote? Is it by Marcus Aurelius is uh strict with yourself, tolerant with others. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that, that, that quote is just amazing, man. You got to be strict with yourself. Cause no, you got to think about it. Nobody else, they don't care. Why would they care? Nobody so, cares about you, but you. Nobody's going to yeah. care if you're sick on the couch, fat, if you're having health problems. Nobody cares. The only no. person that's going to get it right and fix it for you is going to be you. Nobody else is going to fix it for you. Dude, and that's why, you know, you got to you gotta take action today. Everybody else, they put stuff off for tomorrow when or they need it. New Year's resolution, that's, you know, New Year's is coming up and it's like, Dude. Oh, oh. January 1st, I'm going to start this. I'm going to start that. Why do you got to wait till January 1st? Just do it Dude. today. Yeah. I, I don't even know what a new year means. It's a, it's, it's, it's only today. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, you, you, see, you see that when I used to go to the gym, 24 hour fitness, it was like every January 1st, it was like there was the, the gym was completely packed with people just packed. I mean, you couldn't even get a machine in there. And then slowly by like February, mid-February, it was like there was half those people there. And then by like mid-March, it was like back to normal, back to the regular people that were there. Well, you know what it is? It's, um, you know, it's it's just funny because we don't have this trouble because we mastered it a long time ago, working out to habit. Yeah. And it just shows that these people are basically trying to start a new habit of working out. And they're failing because they're like, hey, I went to the gym for a month. Why am I still fat? Yeah. Hey, I went to a g- gym for two months. Why, why, why am I not as strong as that guy over there? But they haven't figured it out that it's, this is a practice. It's, you have to make this a part of you working yeah. out. And not you just know? that, but your whole discipline, everything you do needs to become a part of you. And you're going to fail every once in a while. Like, look, okay, you might have time off work and you get out of it for a while, but you realize I'm getting out of it and you get yourself back on track. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do because that's what, that's basically what the mindset you have to have is like, there's no, there's no option here. I don't have an option. And yeah, you might not be losing weight as fast as you want, but it doesn't take you. It didn't take you a week to get fat. It didn't take you a week to get sick and out of shape. It took you years, years. And so what's going to fix it? It's probably going to take double the amount of time to fix it than it took you to get. Yeah, that was a good point. A lot of people, they don't understand that, man. It's like, dude, you've been eating like crap and not working out forever. 
do you think a month is going to, that's not going to change anything. Mm -mm. And then you got the compound effect. So whatever you do over a period of time is just going to compound. So if you, if you work out and you're working out consistently for, for three years and you're, you know, you're going to be at a good, a good starting point to go from there. You're going to get even stronger from there because you're already strong. Now you're going to get even stronger. And the, the longer you go not doing it, that's going to compound to where now you're, you're gaining more weight faster. Your, your health is declining faster. <laughs> man, that's just, that just goes to show you, man. If you, if you pick bad habits, you're going to be bad. It's as simple as that. You pick good habits, you'll be good. I think that's the, the, one of the main things on this journey of ours, you know, trying to be more disciplined is just realizing like your mind and how powerful it is and the things that you tell yourself every single day. And sometimes you don't even know what you're telling yourself. You, you don't even listen to your own voice. It's just all day telling you something and you're just going along with it. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Voice. You're right. Voice in my head. But in reality, you got to fight that voice. You gotta say, no, you're wrong. At least I can whatever I want. Yeah. At least question it. Yeah, question it or push against it. Dude, like you have to be able to do that. Talk to people too and ask them about these types of things and see if they're even aware of anything, bro. Like a lot of people just, they're sleepwalking through life. Yeah. They, they, yeah that's that's why I love true. things that, that bring self awareness, man. There's a lot of stuff that I've been figuring out that brings self awareness, man. Um, doing bar hangs. That's a great one too. Yeah. I've been getting really into those, man. I, yeah. Like do try to do three or four sets of just bar hanging a day. It's it's, there's so many good benefits, man. It's unbelievable. Try to hang for about a minute. We're like gorillas, right? Or apes or whatever. They swung from trees nonstop, dude. So all these people have shoulder problems and, and, back problems and weak grips and all this crap dude it can all be saved with bar hangs it's, yeah. it's good for your shoulder your Those grips your, your forearms dude but then it's like a mind game too at the same time because you get up there and try to hold yourself for two minutes see what your mind starts telling you yeah <laughs> well, even even being in cold immersion or a cold shower you know you're sitting there and you're like Fuck, dude like this I did my first day today. Did I tell you? Yeah, you told me. Yeah. So uh, how was it, dude? It freaking sucked. <laughs> Literally, Is that like the first time you've ever done it like that, where because normally I don't take a shower in the morning, right? So if anything, I'll I'll brush, I'll, I'll splash some cold water on my face mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah, I literally I woke up as soon as I got out of bed. Like literally, I'm tired. I just woke up. I turn on the freaking cold shower and I got in. It sucked. It was horrible. Yeah. It's hard to start that way too. I mean, when you get in and it's already cold, it's like, ah, ah I don't want to get in here. But you can start off at hot and then just turn it straight to cold and you're already in it. So you have to just deal with it. Dude, one of my buddies was telling me that it's actually dangerous to put it on your scalp, like cold water. He said it could kill brain cells. I don't know if that's true. Interesting. Yeah. I have to, so, I have to uh, talk to Huberman on Twitter and ask him. Right? <laughs> we should. I don't know. But he's saying that Wim Hof says that. That's what he was saying. So and then in the thing too, Huberman was saying that you want to get the cold water neck down immersion. I don't know. I, I don't mess with anything with the brain. If he says it, I might as well just keep it under here, you know? You never know, though. It's There's all this bro science out there. And One thing he said that scared me a little bit, too. Um, he says that when you're doing the cold immersion therapy, there's a good chance that you'll get cold-like symptoms within two weeks. But You know, I was, you I was going in my pool during Christmas last year. I was jumping in my pool, and it was super cold. I did start feeling like I was getting the sniffles and getting kind of cold, and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I should do this. And I got COVID literally probably a week or two after that so <laughs> i mean i'm i'm not saying that that's what caused it but i did get sick after I, when i was doing that right. I, the pool is way colder than a cold shower it was like 30 degrees or 20 degrees or something mm, so yeah yeah 
I mean, I, I don't really get sick too often now, but I, I don't like being sick. Yeah. So, but I do like doing it. So it's something that I really don't want to do. Right. It sucks. And that's why I want to do it, <laughs> you know, cause it's, it's great for discipline. If I could force myself to do something I really don't want to do, it sucks right away in the morning. And I could force myself to do that every single morning. That's going to be a lot of discipline gained. Yeah. I like that too. It's like trying to force yourself to do things that you don't really want to do or things that suck on purpose because that literally makes you more disciplined. Even, you know, let's say you can, you want ice cream and you can get ice cream easily. You have ice cream in the freezer, but you know, you're like, no, I can't have ice cream. If I want ice cream, I need to do a hundred pushups. I need to do a hundred body squats and then I can get that ice cream. So you, you give yourself something purposely that sucks to get something in room for it. So you're not just going and rewarding yourself for no reason. You can say, okay, I want to go get some new shoes and you can easily go buy new shoes, but you're like, no, but I'll buy new shoes at the end of the week. If I work a little bit more on this project or I stay a little bit longer at work, then I can get it. You got to earn it, man. And nobody, everybody wants, and they don't want to earn it and they all want instant gratification too yeah you got that tiktok that's giving you instant dopamine hits every single time that you scroll yeah. up that's why doing stuff like this that we're trying to do with the podcast it seems like it wouldn't work today you know when when everybody just wants 10 second clips but actually people listen to these which is pretty interesting you know they, yeah. they listen to four hour episodes on joe rogan and stuff like that what I like about this podcast is that we can, you know, grow with everybody. Like, I'm not saying that I know everything about discipline or I don't want to act like I know everything about discipline, but it's nice to be able to talk about it, learn more things for it and discuss it with you and get your information that you've learned and bounce them off each other and talk about it and, and try to learn even more. And that's what I like. about it. We're learning with everybody. And that's something oh, yeah. that's awesome about this podcast. We're, we're, we've just begun. You know, so I love the fact that we're doing this whole thing, how we are documenting our personal development. It's really cool. I don't think I've, I've ever seen anybody do it, which it seems very helpful because other people that are trying to improve themselves, they can get ideas and get motivated by stuff that we're doing and stuff that we're working on. And it's just, yeah. it's, it should be a great feedback loop, you know? That's like one thing when I'm listening to a certain podcasts, like if I'm listening to Real AF or Joe Rogan or any of these other podcasts, it's like these people, it feels like these people already know everything and I'm trying to learn from them. It, it doesn't feel like I'm learning along with the people on the podcast. I'm learning what they're learning in real time. I, I'm already trying to learn from these people. They already know everything and I need to like try to learn that. I need to know what they're, what they know, you know, instead of being like, oh, I can learn along with these guys. That's yeah. one thing that I really like about it. So so what are some of the things that you're currently working on? Mm, I feel like I'm always working on my mind. I mean, that's number one. I'm always trying to, you know, find ways to battle my mind, whether it be through working out or through doing things like this podcast where it's like, it's hard to just yeah. start a podcast. You know, like we're just starting this and it's super hard because it's, we have to figure out everything. We have to figure out how to record it, how to upload really, it. Especially for you, because, you know, this guy, he doesn't have any social media. He doesn't put himself out there. So this is impressive. It, yeah. It's, I don't really like to put myself out there. So this for me is pretty, it's pretty hard, but I like it because it's challenging me something that I will be at work thinking about, Oh, I'm going to do a podcast tonight and be like, I don't want to do it. What, where's the way yeah. I can get out of it? <laughs> uh, Kyle, I'm sick. Kyle, sorry. I can't make it. Uh, I'm going to be busy tonight. Thing. But when you're you know what? It's like, no, okay, I'm going to do it. We're starting it. We're doing it at seven and that's what time we're doing it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I want to do it or not. It doesn't matter how stupid it looks. It doesn't matter how, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm doing it and eventually we'll get better at it. Yeah, bro. That's, that's really cool, man. Yeah. And whether, and whether we get one listener or whether we get a hundred listeners or whether we get no listeners, it's like, whatever we're doing it and it's, we're taking action. Yeah. Well, and you know, the cool thing, you know, 
I think I've said this one before, but uh, but I think it's Jim Quick. It's either Jim Quick or Robert Kiyosaki. He, I think it might be Robert. Um, he says when you teach it, it's like learning it twice. Yeah, so, you know, we're we're kind of teaching ourselves through this whole process, but in the same process, we'll be teaching others, which that's why I'm so excited about doing the podcast. And that's why we're so excited about doing it too. No, it's good. And it's good to just keep that mindset going of, you know, yeah, this is hard. Yeah, we don't want to do it, but we're going to do it no matter what. doesn't matter how we feel. doesn't matter how tired we are. doesn't matter what we got going on, we're going to do it. And that's has to be like that with the gym has to be like that with your work has to be like that with everything. It's easy to do at work. Cause it doesn't matter what you have going on. You have yeah. to go to work. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I can't call in. I have to go to work. So it doesn't matter if there's a party going on, if there's a, you know, family event going on, it's like, sorry, I got to work. And yeah. that sometimes you just have to do that. It's like, it doesn't matter if it's raining outside. It doesn't matter if, if, you know, you, your leg hurts a little bit. It's like, well, what can you do? If it hurts a little bit, you can, you can run on it. If it hurts a little bit, you can do arms. You can do whatever you can do. Yeah. I started working on a one new thing. I've been working on my nasal breathing. That has been really improved. Um, cause I, I have deviated septums. So it's really hard for me to breathe out my nose, but literally like if you do, nasal breathing exercises and you really work on it you could fix it so that that's been really good been working on my posture posture is a tough i'm still working on that one and the new one that i've started dude is manners it's a big one for me i i, I a lot have, of people I, don't have manners anymore i have no manners i have some but i can what get better manners are you working on uh mainly right now table manners like no elbows on the table. I'm good with that. I chew with my mouth. Yeah, because I, yeah, I can't breathe. You know? <laughs> you can't breathe out your I, nose? Huh? You can't breathe out your nose? No, that's what I was saying. It's hard for me to breathe out my nose, but I'm getting better at the nasal breathing. So in turn, I'm getting better at chewing with my mouth closed. But I think another one of my problems is I when I eat, I'm used to eating really fast. I just have to, I, for the things that I've been doing, like even our job, I got to eat fast, right? Yeah. Um, the military, you had to eat really fast. So I've always been eating really fast. So then I didn't really care what I looked like, but now that I really have to focus on that, I've been working on it. But I think one of my problems is I take too big of bites too, just like huge bites. So I've been taking smaller bites. I've been trying not to slurp. When I drink, that's really tough. I honestly don't even know how you do it. You just like, it's tough, man. So I've been doing that and trying to get like all the table manners. What I've been doing is I just watch people and see what they're doing, especially like, you know, cause we've had all these holiday family dinners, right? So I'm watching them and seeing what they're doing. I'm like, oh, their fork's done, right? Where, how do they put it on their plate? And how do you know if they have manners? I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it up on, on Google. Like what are the proper table? Yeah. Oh, I have, I've been like reading, you know, reading up on it and stuff. It's going pretty well, you know, but I, I also want to have all like gentlemanly manners too. Like I, I always open doors for women and, yeah. um, but that, that nowadays will make you a sexist. That'll make you think you're better than women. <laughs> if you open the door for them, <laughs> open it and slam it. <laughs> <laughs> that means that you're better than them and you have to open the door for them. Yeah. Well, you know, if they don't like it, then whatever. I really don't <laughs> care. I'm doing what I'm trying to do. And, and that's, that's another thing. No, it's good. We should try to bring that back, you know, because nobody does that anymore. Nobody opens a car door for their girlfriend or their wife. Nobody, yeah. nobody's throwing down their jacket on a puddle for the girl yeah. to step over or, you know, all yeah. those you know, old school gentlemanly things. Yeah, Nobody does that anymore. Pushing them in, you know, letting other people sit. I want. I'm. I'm doing all that. Yeah, they're so, trying to. They're trying to get rid of that because they don't want you to to do that anymore. You know what they are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they. Um, but yeah, you want to talk about? Uh, we got. We got some current events and some stuff. Speaking I, I of some, they. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about they. I got some stuff going down on Twitter, man. That's been been crazy. Yeah, yeah, I was some of that yesterday. Yeah, and if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me at Tesla Spaceship. It'll be in the description. Follow <laughs> me at 
I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Nick doesn't have any social media. So leave a comment below on what social media you think he should get and why. The why is important. Yeah. So what's been going on, dude? I, I saw a little bit of it today um, on YouTube. Well, dude, so there a couple days ago, right? There's been some stuff I want to talk to you about. Um, so you know Grant Cardone, right? Yeah. I think I, I, I asked you this question, but I want to ask it again because it, it's just it's been going off. So he he did a little poll. He said, would you rather have a million dollars or a million friends and why? What would you have? Probably a million friends. Really? Did I not ask you this? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Why? <laughs> because they're connections to other things. You can you can use them. Maybe they have a connection to somebody that's of importance that you can use to network and build a company or, I mean, a million friends, dude. Like you could literally sell so much shit from a million people to another million. I mean, you, you compound a million, two million, to four million to eight million, like boom, you got like, so many people that you can like network with. So you're going to have a lot of friends, dude. Holy <laughs> crap. I would pick a million dollars, dude. Big time. Really? Why? Yeah, because um, I, I feel it like you can't develop really good relationships with that many people, right? You want to have a handful of really tight, good friends. Yeah. You know, so I want to keep my circle small and tight and my money close. But like, <laughs> what kind of friends are we talking about? Are we talking about like, like followers? Or are we talking like, Friends. people that you are like super close with or are we talking about people that you know that will that will hook you up like if you need something like like a big huge network like entertain war room or something i don't think followers it's it's he said million friends so it, just like a close friend like you yeah, guy at work, you know is a friend would you want a million of those i mean i don't think that'd be possible <laughs> yeah right and then what are you gonna do live in a city with them yeah or, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to read the context of the question, but yeah, the way I look at it, give me a million bucks, man. And shoot, I can invest that. And then in 80 years, I mean, that'll be a, a lot, you know, and then I, and then I'd have my handful of close, really good friends that, but yeah, it was getting so much controversy. So that was like the first one. You put that on Twitter. Yeah. That Grant, no Grant Cardone. He did a poll. Oh. Right. So it was pretty split too. Yeah. So that was like the main thing that has been going down. But uh, then what what did you see? Because you were the one who sent me the thing today. Oh, well, you were, yesterday you were sending me the thing about um, Andrew Tate with the, what's her name? Gre Greta? Yeah. I don't even know who that is. Greta Thunberg or something. Some like girl that was like on TV or at some kind of like. I know that like meme. You know that meme? She's like. Uh, no, she was at like the this big UN summit or something, and she went up and like gave us a, a huge speech about about climate change and how like because she's a like a kid and like how we're destroying like kids' future and stuff with climate change. And you sent me that on Twitter yesterday with Andrew Tate telling her all about the cars and everything that he has, like the 30, 30, 33 she's, cars. She's got, that, she's got that one meme. How dare you? You seen that? Yeah, because that's what she she said that. Like, how dare you up in the thing? Like, how dare you? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But then today you get the news that, that Andrew Tate's been arrested on, like, sex trafficking charges. And... I mean that's that's pretty convenient. That's pretty coincidental, no? Yeah, it's really weird, man. They were doing uh Twitter spaces and talking about it. I think he has they have him for charges for other stuff too. I don't I don't know all the exact charges, but it's just crazy because I was listening to a podcast today and he was talking about it on there and about how he's trying to get power and that these people are going to you know, they're either going to arrest him for something he didn't do and put him in jail, or they're going to kill him. Dude, and you know they tried they, him, it didn't work. You know how they caught him too? Um, he posted. You know, yeah, they got him with those pizza boxes. But it's like how you, that doesn't make any sense to me because it's like, wouldn't you know he's if he flies with a passport into Romania, you would know he's in Romania. Yeah, wouldn't they? I didn't. I didn't understand that part either, dude. 
It's like I feel like they're trying to push that pizza company, like make him big. It's like you would know he's in Romania. He flew <laughs> to Romania with his passport. It was a big pizza advertisement. <laughs> maybe, maybe the pizza place like paid like you know paid yeah, off somebody or something. Or dude, that'd be a good idea. It that'd be some marketing right there. That'd be some smart marketing, dude. <laughs> get it global wow i mean it's just crazy because it's it's one of those things where you know the guy you know love him or hate him you know he I, like 80 percent of what he says is like it's spot on it's just trying to help men be men again you know and that will help everybody i mean i know women hate him but women want men to be men women don't want men to be women and yeah. they don't even know that they want men to be men. And that's the thing. It's like they just think they want us to be the certain way, but they don't know what they want. They don't want that. You know, you, no woman wants to come home from a long, like a long day of work and have to make all the decisions and, and have their man complain to them and telling them all these things that they don't want to hear. It's like they don't want that. They want him to be a man. Yeah, and that's, right. what, that's what he was, he's trying to do. And I think that, you know, whoever the powers that be, they don't, they don't really want us to be men. They want us to be just sheep, sheeple. What's he doing exactly? He's like, uh, who is it? Is it um, Aristotle who tried to weaponize the youth? Yeah. When he got arrested? Was that, was that who it was? Yeah. Yeah, uh, because you're, we're the most impressionable like age range, like the 30-year-old, you know, the 20 to 30-year-old range. It's... We're impressionable and we're able to start revolutions and stuff. You know? Well, yeah, we're the workhorses, man. We're, we're going to do everything. Yeah, and if um, we're not doing what they want, then the whole system fails. Yeah, he's, he's got a great message, though, man. And I, I, I don't understand how people I, – I, I honestly – I can't see how people hate people for what they say or believe in. It's just crazy to me. I, I can't see it. I don't think, and sometimes I don't even think it's real hate. I think it's a lot of bots and it's a lot of stuff that, you know, like what Elon is doing. He's pushing out all this information showing that a lot of this hate that was coming for certain things were not even real. They weren't even real platforms. They were just bots that were just making it seem like it was going along with their narrative. I know, man. I was, I was kind of thinking about that the other day. I'm like, dude, couldn't Twitter just make a bunch of bots and not really tell anyone and then just like pump their own stuff? Yeah. It's just like all these followers, even on Instagram, it's like probably half of the follow followers are fake. I mean, I remember back when I had Instagram, it was like, I'd have some friends and they were like, yeah, I bought some followers. You can buy followers and like have make your follower account look bigger than it is, you know? And it's like not even real people. It's just fake people. <laughs> yeah. Just to make yourself look cooler. So it's like I'm, I'm sure they do that with things like that when they don't want a certain narrative pushed, you know, certain certain entities, and they don't want a narrative pushed. They'll go and have fake accounts push a different narrative, and people read it and go, "Oh, this person is saying that that's bad because of this and because of that," and then that'll sway you to believe that. Dang. But you know, we have to be disciplined enough to, and I think that's one thing that the world isn't good at is they're not disciplined enough to look at a look at something and be objective about it and think, is this true? Or is this something that's like, what is all this? This could be fake. So this could be a fake thing going on. Let me look at it objectively. Do I believe this? What do I believe? Why do I believe this? Why do I think this is true? Instead of just jumping to a conclusion and, oh, yep, that's it. He's wrong. He's right. He's this. Just because you just take it right away and just think that's it. Yeah. And then they, they do that. And then they close off their mind too, to where if anybody disagrees with this, yeah. we're fighting the confirmation bias or whatever. It's like you have, if you pick something, you need everybody to believe what you believe to make it, you know, that, that you made the right decision. Yeah. And then if somebody has a different opinion, you're going to hate them. Yeah. Just we have to hate you. Which is crazy. You, you shouldn't hate anybody based upon a different opinion. No. I mean, we can all have different opinions. You know, I like chocolate ice cream, but somebody might like vanilla ice cream. That's a different opinion. It's a different taste. It's a different light. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And I don't have to hate you because you like vanilla and I like chocolate. Yeah, it's, dude, that's the one thing that I think is kind of weird. Is, you know how we can all think differently and stuff, but we're almost forced to hate the same things. Because if you don't hate something that everybody hates, 
then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. That isn't that weird. That's where we live in. Yeah. But hopefully with being disciplined, we can we can break change the it. cycle and, and change it. I think we change the world. Man. We could. All right, bro. Well, this was a good second podcast. I'm sure they're just gonna get better from here. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. That was this was a great talk. So to recap, what do you think, mindset-wise? I think that you just have to make sure that you're doing the things that you don't want to do when they come up and forcing yourself to do it no matter how bad you feel, no matter you know what you're thinking. It doesn't matter. I have to do it, and I'm going to do it. And for me, what, what works for me is just getting up and doing it. I don't think about it. I don't put any thought in my head. If I start feeling like I'm thinking about it, I get it out of my head, and I just go and do it. And once you start doing it, you don't even remember that you didn't want to do it. You're yeah, happy man. at the end that you did it. Yeah, man. Biggest thing I, I think, you know, is uh, taking action, like you said, right off the bat and uh, not overthinking things, man. Because when you start to overthink things, that's when all the resistance comes, man. This is when that, 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 it just keeps piling up. And you, what about this? What about that? Dude, you got to just take action. You got to take action today because that's, that's all we have, man. Everybody's planning stuff way out in the future. You don't even know if that's coming. You could literally die in your sleep tonight. You know, we don't know. So you need to take action now. I think one of the best things I heard is anxieties in the future, depressions in the past and in the present is when you're happy. So just be in the present and just do, do what you need to do and don't think about it. Doers get things done, not thinkers. Yeah, man. All right. All right well, 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 I will see you on the next episode. All right, buddy. Take care, everybody. See you then.